So I'm pretty excited because today I received a new Logitech product. Now this isn't because Logitech sent it to me, I bought it, but um, you might ask, what's so exciting? That's the company that makes mice and things, right? Well, if you're an iPad user like me, then you've probably been uh, excited in the last few years with what's happened with the iPads. With the iPad Pros, with all these great interesting keyboard accessories coming out, you're able to use iPads much more like a laptop now. And it's exciting because you get the benefits of a touchscreen, having the Apple Pencil, all of that nice ergonomic stuff with the option to use it as a laptop. Now with trackpad support and uh, you know, later versions of iPad OS. And this is something we didn't expect Apple to do, but they've really been doing a great job on the software end of making iPads more capable. Unfortunately, the hardware end has been a little limited. And what I mean by that is Apple made an accessory called the Magic Keyboard. It's great, it, you know, it's a great product. It has a USB-C pass-through, it has a backlit keyboard, it has a full um, trackpad, or you know, as big of a trackpad as they could fit in there. And everyone who's used it, I know, has been very happy with it. But it's very expensive and it's also just a little limiting because it doesn't let you use the iPad like an iPad. It's meant to be like a dock, so you couldn't fold around the keyboard because of the way it's designed. You actually just have to take the iPad out. Logitech, very recently, made a new product. And this product is really exciting because this is much more like a traditional iPad keyboard folio case. It doesn't have any cool kind of floating cantilever design. It's much more traditional. In this case, it's a good thing. It's much cheaper, first of all. It's almost half the price. You only get one port. It doesn't let you charge to another port and use another port for data. So this isn't like a, you know, it's not as good of a dock style desk setup as the Magic Keyboard, but hey, it's half the price. And uh, I honestly think it works better portably because you can actually use the iPad like a tablet still. And in a little bit, I'm gonna talk about all of the modes that Logitech built into this. Interestingly enough, this has a kickstand. This might be familiar if you used a Surface or a Surface Pro, products like that. This is really cool. Uh, this lets you uh, adjust infinitely. You have a very wide range of motion uh, to use this in. The downside of this kickstand, unfortunately, is that it um, requires a lot of depth. So if you have a one of those crappy school desks, this might not be very applicable in pandemic times, but uh, normal times, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, this thing actually um, won't be great for that. It takes a lot of space. On a home desk, or if you have plenty of space, a good desk, it's fine, but this takes more space than a normal laptop would. Overall, this thing is really bulky. Um, it's heavy, and you should expect that with the territory, given all the functionality this adds, but it's usable. Still iPad-like, just like a very heavy iPad. Like I said, the keyboard itself is great. I really like the keys and it has backlighting. The backlighting is nice. Um, interesting fact, when I first got this, backlighting did not work. I updated iPadOS 13.6, which was released very recently, and then it worked. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe it was a software compatibility thing they had to add. I should mention this uses Apple's smart connector. That's another huge advantage to this product. There's plenty of Bluetooth keyboards in cases for the iPad. But what that means is they have to have their own battery and they pair with the iPad wirelessly. It's cool because you could use it wirelessly, but uh, this is very simple. The smart connector is just a magnetic connector that Apple's first party keyboards use, and so does this. And what it means is the keyboard gets all the power for the trackpad, for the backlighting, everything from the iPad. You don't have to charge it independently, and you're never gonna have connection issues, theoretically, because it's just magnetically attached. So no needing to you know, fiddle, fiddle with Bluetooth settings. Trackpad, it's very good. I don't like that it's a diving board mechanism. What that means is that it, uh, will actually click in on the bottom, but not on the top, just because of the way it's designed. It's fine, but it's like a you know normal Windows laptop. But if you're used to Apple's force touch trackpads, like on a MacBook, or you're used to the Magic Keyboard for some reason <laughs> uh, on the iPad, if you're also considering buying this, this isn't as nice for that. That said, I would recommend enabling tap to click in iOS settings. It works very well. The actual software, like tracking and accuracy, is great on this. Scrolling, all the gestures, they work just fine. Feels like a first party Apple thing. I can't tell if this is glass, but I think it is. It's very smooth, it's definitely not plastic. It's a high quality material. Uh, one more thing about the keyboard I should mention while I'm on this topic. If you're used to a MacBook, just like with a trackpad, this thing's great. It clicks great, has one millimeter of travel. It's very comparable to the Magic Keyboard. Maybe not quite as nice, but mostly there. Keys, the backlighting is very quality, and the layout is just so good. Like, it's just 
it's basically a copy of Apple's layout because they worked with Apple on this product. So if you're used to Apple stuff, this works. And it even has that extra function row, uh, which most MacBooks don't even have now because they have the touch bar. But this actually has a hardware row of functions that you can use for iOS stuff. I love that. Uh, like turning you know, up and down the screen brightness or the keyboard backlighting. Logitech has given this a few extra powers over just being a keyboard case. So the ideal mode and the mode that you're going to see advertised most because the kind of like it's the intended mode is uh, the Surface mode is what I call it. It's like the Surface Pro. It's with a kickstand out with a keyboard. Um, it's a little weird here in my lap, but it actually works. Uh, the keyboard will wiggle a little, but it works. Using the iPad as a tablet though, with it folded back around, that's tougher. It's heavy. I can still use the iPad and I enjoy it, but it's not something I recommend. Honestly, I would recommend taking the iPad out. And this is the biggest downside compared to something like my um, old smart cover, which was just a dumb keyboard, but it was very light and it could remove pretty easily. With this, I uh, kind of have to pry it out. And it's definitely doable, but I probably have to take out my Apple Pencil first. This makes you really realize how amazingly engineered these iPads are. Like, look how small this thing is. But anyways, let's put this back in this big thing. It's well built, but it's just bulky. One thing I should mention, if you have this closed, it actually has a really nice protector for the Apple Pencil. It also works with Logitech's crayon accessory, if you're a bigger fan of that. And there is another mode. There is a movie mode. You can actually use this with the keyboard folded back and with the kickstand on the back folded keyboard. This will work great in a lab actually because of how heavy the thing is overall. And this is great for presenting, for watching movies with friends. Uh, if you have limited desk space, my biggest issue with Apple smart keyboard is that the keyboard is always in front of it. So with this, you can actually can put it into more compact mode. It's great, like I said, for presenting things or for watching movies, you can adjust it. And if you adjust it to its maximum, you get a, what Logitech calls a sketching mode. This is perfect for taking notes in class or drawing. It's what I would use for that. And to tell you the truth, I like think it's 80% of the way there. There's engineering limits to how stiff they can make this kickstand. If you have light strokes when you draw or write, you will be happy with this. If you don't, you're gonna notice some play here, uh, especially near the top of the screen. That's to be expected. This thing can't be, it's limited by physics and engineering. In conclusion, what do I think of this product? Well, it's great. I think for most people, to be honest, this is a better product than the Magic Keyboard for the money. Apple's Magic Keyboard still has a place. It's not a bad product, but this has the first party, you know, quality, essentially. Uh, Logitech makes great products. Uh, and it supports a smart connector, which very few other keyboards do. And for the current market, I think this is the best option. You might have seen that Bridge, a company which makes a lot of third-party um, keyboards for iPads and surfaces, also has a product like this. They have a keyboard case that has a trackpad. The keyboard part's okay, but when they added the trackpad, they didn't work with Apple on it, so the trackpad support with the iPad is not great. It's nice. I recommend it for $160, $159. It is a steal uh, if you have any need for using an iPad Pro as a laptop. It'll work on both models of iPad Pro. I have the 2018, as you can see here. And of course, there is some extra space left there for the camera, but I think that's fine because I don't care. If you had the 2020 iPad Pro, it would look fine. With this, you just have blank space. You could maybe put a sticker there or do something cute. Either way, it works. It's great on the 11-inch iPad, and I highly recommend it.